welcome to another Thought for the Day from Avon Valley Churches. My name is Sheila. I worship at Hyde Church in the New Forest, one of the seven churches in the Benefice. Yesterday, we lit the candle for the third Sunday of Advent, the rose pink one, when we celebrate John the Baptist on what is known as Gaudete Sunday. Advent originated as early as 567, when the monks were ordered to fast for 40 days as a preparation for Christmas. In the 9th century, this was shortened to four weeks to parallel the four weeks of Lent. On Gaudete Sunday, the season of Advent shifts its gaze from the Lord is coming to the Lord is near and the monks were able to break, have a break from their fasting. Gaudete is Latin for rejoice, and the focus is on rejoicing in the Lord and Christian joy. The name was taken from the introit to the Latin mass. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, which comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians, which William will read to us now. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Just imagine, Paul wrote this when he was in prison. Although at this stage he was in his own rented house, but under house arrest and guarded by soldiers, However, he was a captive, his future was uncertain, and he was writing to people who were facing persecution. Henri Nouwen, the Dutch priest and theologian, described the difference between happiness and joy. Happiness depends on external circumstances. We can be unhappy about many things, but joy can still be there because it comes from the experience of knowing that you are unconditionally loved by God and that nothing, sickness, failure, emotional distress, oppression, war, or even death can take that love away. This is a truth that is very relevant to the times we are living in. As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, many have experienced bereavement, isolation, loneliness, anxiety about loved ones, loss of jobs and income, business failures. The list is endless. And so many have missed the fellowship of worshiping together in the normal way. However, we can know for sure that God is with us in this all and joy is one of his gifts to us. During the Last Supper, Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Even in the midst of the pandemic, there have been lots of things to rejoice in. The dedication and commitment of the NHS staff, the volunteers who have shopped and people looking out for each other. Now we can rejoice that there are vaccines produced in record-breaking time due to the hard work and commitment of the scientists 
building on the work of many years. The end of the pandemic is in sight. A huge help in our worship and rejoicing in the Lord is by singing his praises. I realised how much I was missing this when Marianne shared her thought for the day back in June. She entitled it, Let All the World in Every Corner Sing. That was her opening hymn, played with gusto and flair by a wonderful organist. Even watching him made me feel joyful. I'm probably the least qualified person to talk about singing and Advent carols. I really can't sing, but I do enjoy singing hymns with others. Knowing this, my youngest daughter gave me an unusual present for my 80th birthday. It was a two-day weekend course at Serum College, led by Ruth Lambdin on singing for people who can't sing, or something like that. I can't remember the exact title. There were about 20 of us, a mixed bag of people like me, who generally thought they can't sing, and others who could sing, but wanted to sing better. I met lovely Ruth Sally, Reverend Sally, who's an associate priest at St Peter's Parkston, where Mike and Heidi now are. She could sing, but wanted the confidence to sing Evensong. We started off with an explanation of the mechanism of singing. I was fascinated by the anatomy and body parts involved. Then there were exercises and short pieces to sing, rounds and longer songs. We had time off after lunch and Ruth generously used the time to give us 10 minute slots of one to one. Optional of course, but with the carrot that if we didn't, we might be asked to sing to the whole group the next day. That was enough to make me sign up. I discovered I was, was able to sing in tune, although I know I don't a lot of the time and Ruth gave me various tips which were helpful. On Sunday, we were able to suggest things we would like to sing, and Sally and the rest of us had a chance to sing Evensong, later going over to the cathedral for the real thing. If you think you can't sing and have the opportunity to attend such a course, I would thoroughly recommend it. But back to Advent carols. They have been sung for a very long time, but the Advent Sunday carol service as we know it, and Martin showed us the wonderful procession at Salisbury Cathedral in last Tuesday's Thought for the Day, originated at King's College, Cambridge in 1934, composed by Dean Eric Milner White who'd also been responsible nine years earlier for the more widely known Festival of Nine Lessons and Carols for Christmas Eve. In his preface to the Advent Sunday service, Dean Milner White wrote, in the old English liturgies, the Advent offices made a preparation for the coming of our Lord to this earth, far more vivid and eager than those of our present 1662 prayer book. So an Advent carol service, if without precedent, is not without suitability, if it helps to express the desire of all nations and ages. The purpose of the service is not to celebrate Christmas, but to expect it. The Advent hymn we heard at the beginning, Hark the glad sound the Saviour comes, was written by Philip Dodderidge in 1735. The original manuscript is still in existence. He was a dissenting minister at the time of religious intolerance, when not to conform to the established church was costly. His hymns were not intended for public use, 
He wrote them for his own congregation of the Independent Congregational Chapel in Northampton. They were composed to be sung after his sermon and were based on his text for the day. On that day, he preached on the occasion when Jesus went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and read for the prophet, from the prophet Isaiah, a reading we heard yesterday. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Hark the glad sound, the Saviour comes, the Saviour promised long. Let every heart prepare a throne, and every voice a song. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for the joy that entered the world when Jesus was born. Thank you for becoming God with us. Lord, sometimes it's difficult to live joyfully, especially in difficult times. This week, remind us you are in control. As we fix our eyes on you, fill our hearts with renewed strength, courage and hope. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for joining us for Thought for the Day today. Anticipating Christmas, please listen and join in to Joy to the World. Goodbye and God bless you. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy.